Welcome to this edition of Shem Golf Academy Lessons. Today, I'm coming behind the desk. As most of you know, the World Handicap System is being rolled out around, around the world. In the US, I think it's already in effect. Uh, in the rest of the world, it's being rolled out in phases. Um, in Kenya, specifically, it's being rolled out on January 1st. I believe it's already in place in Uganda and other African countries also have different timelines. So I want to cover a few things that you need as a golfer to understand about the World Handicap System. For those in the US, the changes were not that major. Uh, for the rest of the world who are using this other ha uh, handicap system, Congo and others, we will need to do readjust our terminology and a few things and how we record and uh, I'll record our scores. So, what do you need to know about the World Handicap System? As usual, uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't. Remember to click the bell button for notifications. And let's share this content with as many people as we can so that we can grow the channel together. So here we go. So what's the World Handicap System? Before the World Handicaps, Handicap System, we had six different handicapping systems that used different formulas and different method methodology for handicapping. The rules of golf, the rules pertaining equipment were all common in all the regions, but handicapping was different. So R&A and USG came together and brought together all these systems, picking different um, features to make one universal system. And the goal was really to make um, the handicap use system, the handicap index universal and portable. That means regardless of where you are in the world, you are handicapped the same and therefore you could use the handicap system or you could play in competition without having to go through conversions and all that. So what are the benefits? As I mentioned, uh, it's consistent around the world. Uh, the, the same formulas and the same methodologies are used around the world. Uh, the other purpose was to make it inclusive and accessible. And one of the ways is uh, they managed to do that is to increase the maximum handicap to 54, allowing more people to get handicaps and allowed, allowing different levels of competition. Um, there is also the daily revisions. Um, it's not quite... Uh, in some systems that was already in place, and, but in systems like the USGA system, the revisions were done every two weeks. So every day you play, your handicap can change. And the most important one is plenty of opportunities to submit your scores. That means if you're playing your regular groups or your regular social games, you can use those opportunities to submit those scores and uh, manage your handicap that way. So those people, sorry for the language, you, you play a lot, a lot of Kamares, those Kamari rounds can now be used for handicap system. It's not just official competitions. So you have a lot of opportunities to present your cards for handicapping, and that will really give you a true sense of where oh, your handicap should be. So these are some of the definitions you need to understand um, and know with the new World Handicap System. Uh, the Handicap Index. That's the measure of a golfer's demonstrated ability. It's not your average score. That needs to be very clear. It's what you are 
capable of doing when you play your best. So you're not always going to play around uh, your handicap index. Uh, the concept, and I'm going to compare a lot of Congo and what the new one is because uh, this video is mostly geared for those who use the Congo system. We had a competition handicap and we had a handicap with one decimal point. That is what is equivalent to the handicap index. Now, for the World Handicap System to work, all the courses had to be rated. And the course rating in the new World Handicap System is really equivalent to the standard scratch score in the old Congo system. And basically what that is, is the estimated average that a scratch golfer is expected to play on that course. Okay, so it's not necessarily equal to power of the course, it's just what an average zero handicap golfer is supposed to play on that course. Slope rating on the other hand, and maybe before I go to slope rating, I might have forgot to put it on here. There is also bogey rating. And bogey rating is the estimated average score, estimated average score that a bogey golfer. And the definition of what a bogey golfer is, is 20 handicap in uh, males and 24 handicap in women. Okay, so bogey golfer is of bogey rating is the estimated score expected from a bogey golfer. So when you get the bogey rating and the course rating, it is used to calculate the slope rating. And that's basically the measurement of the difficulty for a certain set of tees on a course. of a bogey golfer relative to the scratch golfer or the course rating. So that's a combination of uh, how hard is the course for the bogey golfer compared to the scratch golfer. All right. And you really don't need to know, understand how these ratings are done. Uh, your national body in Kenya, for instance, KGU has gone around the courses and will be providing those numbers for every course or every club and every tee box uh, that's already existing. So, playing condition calculation. Uh, for Congo people, you probably have understood, uh, uh, common, you, have, you understand what the CSS is. This is basically the same thing. It's basically an automatic calculation of factors that affected the uh, conditions of play that day. And that figure is usually derived from the scores submitted that day. So the system will automatically calculate that for you. You don't have to worry about where that comes from. Now, this is where we start uh, differing, especially for people coming from the Congo system. The cost handicap. Now, you will have a handicap index that you can carry anywhere you want, but then your course handicap will vary from course to course and, and from T to T, even on the same course, you can play from different T's and have a different course handicap and that's what you will be using to play. In Congo, that is equivalent to the competition handicap. So, in Congo, if you had 14.5, you are playing 15 handicap. In, if you had 14.1, you are playing 14 handicap. So this is similar an adjustment to that, but there is a lot of calculations that goes in. Now, if you are 14.1, you might not necessarily, you might go to a different course and play 17. So this is the calculation that will give you exactly what handicap you are playing, on what course, and on what tees on that course. Okay, so it is very important that when you're starting to play, you know what the exact handicap index is to be able to translate it into the course uh, handicap. And that is a calculation that uh, brings in the course rating and the slope rating to come up with 
the course handicap. I will go deeper into that in a few slides. Playing handicap. Now we know there are competitions that um, give you a percentage, allow you to play at a percentage of your handicap. And that's what playing handicap is. So if you're playing match, uh, match play or um, 5CT where you're giving 90% of the handicap, now playing handicap will basically say 90% of the cost handicap. So whatever the adjustment or whatever the percentage, it is coming from the cost handicap. Now, this is an example I pulled from um, the r and website showing a hole or a hole with uh, five different tees, okay? So each tee box will be rated for men and women. Now, very important to understand that now we don't have men tee box or ladies tee box because those tee boxes are rated for both men and women. People have the flexibility to play on any tee box. Okay, so the cost handicap will vary. If you play from the forward tees or the back tees, it will always vary to reflect that. So you don't have to be, we have to remove that um, notion that there's a ladies tee and men's tee. So in this case, tee box number one is uh, 66, 57 yards. As a scratch golfer is supposed to play around 72.4. Uh, the relative, the slope rating or relative difficulty of the go bogey golfer to the scratch golfer is 132 for men and for women on these same tees, uh, scratch golfer is supposed to play 78.1 and the relative difficulty of a bogey lady golfer compared to a, uh, a scratch lady golfer is 135. So. We will see how this affects um, your course handicap, but now you can have multiple um, tee boxes with different ratings to allow for different levels of play. All right. Again, it, both tees are rated for both women and men, so anybody can play from whichever tee. What is the basic principle of the World Handicap System? It's really to truly reflect the golfer's ability and maintain equity. And the following principles are used. The playing condition, conditions are considered, and that's where the PCC comes from, uh, from uh, playing condition calculation. Now, they will be using the top eight of the last 20 rounds to calculate your handicap. From that, they will always calculate something called the differential, where you don't need to understand how they come with that calculation. I might cover that in a different video. But just understand that the best eight rounds out of your 20 rounds are what will be considered to calculate your handicap. Okay? So it's very important you continue. Just because you play badly on one round doesn't necessarily mean it will improve or it will affect your handicap. Or just because you play well on one round doesn't necessarily mean it will uh, change your handicap and that's why you need to continually submit your cards to truly reflect uh, the handicap because those 20 rounds will always be rolling over so there is an upward movement uh, is capped uh, there is something called like the low ind index handicap that's within a 12 month period the lowest handicap you had there is a soft cap and there is a calculation that comes in when you play, um, you, when you go three over the lowest index, you, you had say you are five, when you get to eight, there is a special calculation that comes in to limit how fast you move up. And then there is a hard cap. So if you are five, the maximum uh, handicap in the, you can get to is 10 within a 12 year period. Again, it's rolling. Uh, that's just to make sure that the handicap doesn't go up too quickly uh, for people. Uh, there's also the 
principle of exceptional scores, uh, you'll be cut uh, minus one if you're seven better or you are handicapped, playing handicap or course handicap, or minus two if you're ten better. Okay, so that's just an extra cut you'll be getting on your handicap based on how well if you score, if you play so well beyond your handicap. And there is also the principle of peer review. People you play with or people who want you're going to play with uh, will have the ability to review your handicap and how it trended. So that's something that's going to be online. Acceptable scores. What are the acceptable scores for your World Handicap System? Uh, the first thing is it has to be an authorized format. Uh, there are formats of golf that you will not be able to submit scores. Some stuff like sc scramble. Okay, so and you'll have to have played uh, at least a minimum number of holes, whether it's nine holes or uh, for nine hole uh, submission or eighteen hole. There is a minimum number. I believe that should be about seven for nine holes and thirteen for uh, fourteen for eighteen holes. If you have played at least thirteen holes, you can submit that score for a handicap, and there's a logic around how you go about that. Uh, I believe when KGU uh, gives out or publishes or starts using the World Handicap System, they're gonna give guidelines exactly how many number of holes. You have to have played in the, com in the company of at least one person who would be your marker. You can't just play by yourself and submit a card. You have to have played by the rules of golf. You can't go to the course, play two balls and decide, okay, the best score is what I'm putting. So part of the scores that you have to submit is that they have to be played. In the, the round has to be played by the rules of golf. Uh, of course, the golf course has to be rated because we are using the slope rating and course rating uh, to calculate the world handicap. So if the, if the course is not rated, you cannot submit a card. Uh, one more important thing is you have to declare before you get on the course that you intend to use that round for handicapping. You can't just get on the course, play, and then decide after the round whether you submit the score or not. So. Even if it's a social round you're going to play, when you get on the course, you have to declare that you intend to use that round for handicapping. All right? And remember, once you declare, there is a score that will be put in for you, whether you submit the card or not. <laughs> so, choose carefully. So, let's talk about how to calculate a course handicap. You will need Three, uh, you need to know your handicap index, and that is the index to the decimal point that you're playing off. You need to know the slope rating, you need to know the course rating, and you need to, to know the power of the course. So it's a part 72, 71, 73. Okay. Now, before I go into this formula, it's good that you know how it's calculated. It's not important to, for you to know why because there will be apps out there that you can use just to plug these numbers in and they'll give you your course handicap and every course is required to have a chart for the conversion for each t they have so from the back t they should have a chart to show what your handicap index translates to a course handicap there for that particular set of t's so between those two you really don't need to know how to calculate it, but it's good for you to know. Uh, so the reason I'm going to, through this is to make you understand why it's important for you to know your handicap index before you play. So in this case, we have a handicap 0, 0.0. Uh, the formula is here, handicap index times slope rating divided by 113. Why 113? 113 is the standard slope, okay? That's the standard based on USGA and the World Handicap has taken the same standard. Um, uh, then you add your cost rating minus par. Okay. So a cost rating of 72.8, slope rating of 133 and a par 72 cost. This will be the examples of uh, I'm going to give 0, 0.0. 
when you calculate they will be playing of handicap one okay so it won't be zero like Congo where you are just rounding off your index to the nearest number but the calculations can give you a different handicap cost handicap that is for 5.0 they would end up playing as a six now the very important point I want to push with example three and four is the importance of that one decimal point. In this same course and same T's, a handicap 14.1 will end up playing as a handicap 17. All right. A handicap 14.2, on the other hand, will end up playing as a handicap 18 or have a course handicap of 18. So it's very important for you to know your index to the point so that you can calculate the correct cause handicap. And remember, it's your, play, it's your responsibility as a player to indicate the right handicap or cause handicap on your scorecard. Okay, so don't be disqualified because you did not know what your actual cause handicap is. And this example three and four is really what I want to get out of this slide is it's very important for you to know to the decimal point. And also it's very important for you to submit as many cards as you can because that one decimal point can make a difference. All right. And as you can see now in Congo, 14.1 would play a 40 regardless of the course. And we know not all courses play the same. There are courses which are harder than the others. This is the whole purpose of the World Handicap System and the beauty of it. That if, you, if your home course is easy, you can go to another course and get a handicap or what we call the course handicap that really translates and equates the difficulty you'll get on the next course. All right? So remember, you don't have to cram these formulas. The clubs are supposed to provide you a table to convert, or there will be apps out there you can download. Uh, when KGU and, uh, releases the system they are going to be using, I don't know if that will be automatically included in that, but it's good for you to know that you need to convert that. All right? All right. And this is also an example of how what the clubs are supposed to give out or a chart or table that that club is supposed to give out. So in this case, it will give you a range of the handicap index and what cast handicap is on that those uh, on that particular T. So there will be how four T's, but back T's, middle T's, whatever it is, each T will have its own table because it will translate to a different handicap for you. All right. So you'll just be able to look at what range your handicap is here and be able to know what the course handicap you should be playing on that course. So handicap committee was there before even in the Congo system is equally important with the world handicap system. So every club should actually have a, an active handicap committee. And that docket really falls under the captains. But a handicap committee is strongly encouraged to perform annual reviews. As a player, if you have an injury or you feel like you, you're not playing to your handicap because of certain things or you've been out for two years, you can always request the handicap committee to review your handicap and they can set it manually to what, to what they think they deem possible. The handicap committee can freeze or unfreeze a player's handicap. Uh, they can adjust your handicap minimum of one, but they can't go back at five. If you remember earlier, I talked about a handicap of five, uh, where you can't go past five within a 12-month period. That is the same cap that they give uh, a handicap committee allowance to adjust it. Apply a penalty score. What does that mean? If you play a tournament, or if they know you played and you declared you wanted to use that round uh, for handicapping and you didn't submit a card, the handicap committee 
can enter a score for you. And that will be usually be equal to your lowest score in the last 20 rounds. Or whatever they, they can prove to, to have been reasonable. So if you're playing partners, say you played X, a score of 94, they can go and put that in score. So remember, you are not the only one who's in charge. The handicap committee can go and put. And this is really to um, discourage people from not submitting scores. Okay? And making sure that people are actually playing as close to possible to their ability or close to their ability. A handicap committee can withdraw or reinstate handicap uh, players' handicap. If you are a habitual person who doesn't submit your card, the handicap committee can decide to withdraw your handicap. Uh, and also determine disciplinary procedures for repeatedly failing to submit scores. Okay? So part of this World Handicap System is to allow you to put as many scores as possible. That's just competition, not just club nights or sponsored competition, but even social rounds or kamaris, all that. It's really to encourage so that you can really get a good grasp of what a person's playing ability is. Competitions. Of course, every club is also supposed to have a competitions committee that sets the rules for the competitions. Uh, so the competition committee can, of course, they continue to do what they do, decide uh, the format of play. Now, with the World Handicap System, we've noticed that uh, now we are going up to 54. That's the maximum handicap. Uh, it might not board well in some competitions to have uh, people who are 40 handicap playing in the competition. So the competition committee has the powers to limit the maximum index, and that's the actual index um, that they'll allow to play in that competition or the playing handicap, okay? So course handicap or playing handicap. So you might be, so based on that, they can limit the, the field. Uh, they have the power to limit the field. So, and based on that also, they can set flights for the competition. So if they want um, course handicap, one to 12 to play in one flight and compete for a certain set of prizes. They have the, the ability to do that. Uh, so say one to 12, there's a flight of 13 to 24 or 24 to 40. So they can have a same competition, but different flights to allow equitable competition. Um, Plus, if they're expecting 200 people and you, you allow a lot of people with a handicap 40, it, it might bring issues of uh, pace of play into question. So the competition committee has the power to limit and set the conditions for who can play in a certain tournament. They also have the powers. Now we know that you can play from any tees and you'll play with a different handicap based on the slope rating and cost rating on that tee box. So they will set rules like now, you know, we are, we are, the common situation I've, I can think of is seniors and juniors. Okay, so they can allow juniors and seniors to play on the forward tees because they are rated. Uh, and everybody else plays from the back tee in the same competition. Again, remember the course handicap they will be given at the back tee is not the same as the front tee. So they'll probably have a higher course handicap from the back tee but uh, the allowance will be deducted if they are going for the front the system should be able to automatically do that and the competitions committee is uh, has the power to set those conditions uh, but regardless if your playing handicap is not the full of your course handicap just know that the course handicap is what is going to be used for handicapping the playing handicap is going to be used to determine the winner of the competition. Example, if you go to a competition and they only say 75% of your course handicap is what they're going to use for handicap, uh, for the competition. For handicapping purpose, 100% of your course handicap will be used. For the competition purposes, 75% will be used. 
So when you record your score, just continue to record it um, how to the limit that you are allowed to for that course handicap. Uh, competition committee also has the ability to determine what happens if you are playing a competition over multiple rounds or multiple days. We've seen that this uh, handicap will be reviewed and calculated every day. Okay, so we are playing uh, a four-day tournament. Uh, the recommendation is really the handicap index you started with on day one should be the handicap index you play through the four days, regardless of whether your handicap changes within those four days or not. But the handicap committee has the right to make that decision. Uh, the handicap committee, I mean the competition committee. The competition committee also has the right to determine what the qualifying round is. What does that mean? We do play this chairman's prize, uh, captain's prize, that they have illegal pin positions uh, for the most part. Or they put, just make it challenging. Or, you know, they have a three, three club competition. So the competition committee decides whether that round is eligible or will be unacceptable for handicapping purposes. All right. So it is important that every club has a competition committee, a handicap committee to be able to run, to, to run, uh, and get this world handicapping system to run properly as it's supposed to be. Again, I hope from this video you are able, you have a a better understanding. Uh, every national body in Kenya being KGU will release of course their materials on how to educate uh, their users on the new system but I hope this gives you a jump start to that and that you are now able to understand what you are required to do and what you need to know about the world handicapping system. I will be releasing other videos to go through uh, some of the details in a little, a little deeper uh, detail uh, but as a golfer, average golfer, I think what I've covered on this uh, particular video is enough to get you started. If you have any questions, feel free uh, to leave a comment below, uh, feel free to contact me in the different forums that I'm in and I'll be glad to, uh, to answer them and guide you wherever possible. Thank you, and until next time, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, uh, share the video, see you next time, and let's continue to build this game together.